archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. On November 21, 1963, a small sounding rocket took off from Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station near Trivandrum. Starting from scratch, the initial activities of rocketry started inside an old church building. Young Indian scientists, engineers and technicians without any background in this field started inventing ways and methods to develop the rockets. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai's foresight and guidance inspired these young scientists, engineers and technicians for expanding the space research. As a result of hard work and dedication, they could set up the infrastructure needed for indigenous development of the products related to rocketry and satellites. To start with, sounding rockets called Rohini rockets, having wide-ranging capabilities, were developed and fabricated. On April 19, 1975, our first Indian satellite Aryabhata was launched by a Soviet rocket from a Soviet cosmodrome. Simultaneously, the efforts to make our own satellite launch vehicle and necessary infrastructure build-up, including tracking stations, were in progress. The first milestone in satellite launch vehicle development was the successful launching of the first SLV-3 with 35 kg Rohini satellite in near-Earth orbit on July 18, 1980. ASLV SROS program has envisaged augmenting the launch capabilities from 40 kg payload in near-Earth orbit to 150 kg satellites and to develop some of the vital and complex technologies required for building future launch vehicles and spacecrafts. Thus, ASLV SROS program has been planned to bridge the gap between experimental launchers and satellites and future operational ones which ISRO is planning and executing. The basic responsibility of building rockets is with the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center at Trivandrum. It is the first and the biggest ISRO center spread over a vast area near the fishing village of Thumba. The Indian satellites are built at the ISRO Satellite Center situated in the garden city of Bangalore. A series of SROS satellites are planned under this program. The SROS, the first in the series, is primarily a technological mission. The primary mission objectives of this first flight are to test the capability of the launch vehicle by placing 150 kg SROS-1 satellite in 400 km orbit and to flight test the SROS bus evolved for SROS missions. The SROS, which appears like a butterfly in orbit, weighs about four times the earlier Rohini satellites and one-sixth that of Apple. It is a three-axis, stabilized satellite and in low Earth orbit unlike Apple and Insat, which are in geosynchronous orbit. The satellite structure forms the basic skeleton of the spacecraft to give it required mechanical strength and rigidity. The development of the satellite is complex in terms of its design, fabrication and qualification which calls for careful planning, quality control and sophisticated facilities. This is the model of 
Strauss one satellite flight model. Here, all supporting subsystems for the satellites are either inside or on these two vertical deck. And this top depth deck is mainly preserved for installing payload or other subsystems so that in future satellites all payload portions will be accommodated on this top deck and other subsystems will be incorporated either inside or this vertical deck. Various payloads and other subsystems are housed in different parts of the satellite and its outer surface carries solar panels. Here is the payload deck assembly which contains launch vehicle monitoring payload, scientific payload gamma ray bust detector, retro reflectors for laser tracking and satellite antenna. The indigenously developed nickel cadmium battery provides power during satellite eclipse and its peak demand. The power generated by solar panels is conditioned by converters and regulators here. The S-band telemetry, tracking, telecommand and data handling system is also an indigenous development. The momentum wheel which operates at a speed of 3500 rpm magnetic talkers and reaction control system along with conical horizon crossing sensor are used for three axis stabilization. The various mechanical parts of the satellite need precision fabrication and strict quality control. Here the satellite parts undergo thermal treatment as per the thermal control design. The electronic packages for satellites are fabricated here. The intricate wiring and assembly need utmost patience and care since a simple default may result in a great disaster for the mission. These electronic systems undergo environmental tests. The solar panel is a vital part of the satellite and is the only source to provide power to the satellite systems in space. These panels are indigenously designed, fabricated and tested using solar cells produced by Bharat Electronics Limited, Bangalore. Reaction control system of the satellite is developed at liquid propulsion unit of ISRO at Bangalore. Here are the thrusters and valves. All the parts need contamination control since they have to control the flow of fuel. Each and every part fabricated undergoes detailed inspection and strict quality control. This titanium tank qualified at 96 bar atmospheric pressure is also designed and fabricated here. Finally, all the parts and subsystems of the satellite are integrated in a clean room and hundreds of parameters are checked out for desired specifications in the ground checkout laboratory. The integrated satellite undergoes simulated space environmental tests like thermovacuum, dynamic balancing up to 140 rpm, vibration, acoustics and solar panel deployment in zero g.
ASLV weighs about 40 tons and is about 24 meters in length and 1 meter in diameter. It is a 5-stage rocket with all solid propellants. Two strap-on motors having canted nozzle constitute zero stage. Building a launch vehicle involves a multidisciplinary approach like aerodynamics, aerospace structures, materials like composites, propellants, chemicals, propulsion engineering, avionics and so on. The boosters, generally called rocket motors, provide the required energy to boost the rocket into space. Solid propellant, which is essentially used in all the stages, consists of oxidizer, fuel and additives. First three stage motors are made of high strength steel and third and fourth stages are made of fiber reinforced plastics and Kevlar material. The nozzle which forms an integral part of the rocket motor is fabricated out of composite material. Inspection and quality control form an integral part of the total process. These motors are assembled and tested under simulated conditions of space to achieve the required reliability. We make these rockets in segments. Each segment is about 3 meter length and carries about 3 tons of propellant. We have used in both core as well as strap-on vehicles PBAN type propellant. This propellant has been used in several rockets and successfully tested. ASLV incorporates secondary injection thrust vector control and reaction control system for effecting control in pitch, yaw and roll. Thousands of tiny components fabricated to stringent specifications undergo vigorous quality control. All these systems are assembled in a clean room and tested under simulated environment for their performance. Control systems are housed inside an interstructure fabricated at HAL and connected to their respective stage motors. These control systems are required to keep the rocket in the predetermined trajectory. These control systems receive commands from the equipment bay. The control system undergoes a series of checks to monitor its performance till the final liftoff. There are a number of auxiliary systems like stage separation, spin-up system, heat shield and its jettisoning system which form part of the total rocket. One of the new technologies developed for ASLV includes strap-on separation and its associated technologies. ASLV strap-ons have to be jettisoned at very high dynamic pressure conditions. 
separation system for stage 2, 3 and 4 are similar to that of SLV-3. It uses a number of pyro devices which are proven to be highly reliable. The heat shield which provides thermal protection for satellite and Apogee motor is tested for its thermal considerations in a specially designed kinetic heating facility. ASLV incorporates spin and separation mechanism to reduce the dispersion during fourth stage separation. The term avionics refers to the electronics and electrical technology applicable to aviation and rocketry. This encompasses a vast area from a simple electrical power supply to sophisticated telemetry and tracking systems as well as advanced guidance and control systems. Closed loop guidance which is a most essential technology required for future launch vehicles is going to be qualified through ASLV missions. This is required in order to achieve highly accurate injection of satellites into orbit. ASL, ASLV, that is the Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle Project, the primary aim is to augment the satellite launch capability from the existing 40 kg in lower Earth orbit to 150 kg in low earth orbit. This is the premier mission. That means almost to make the launching capability more than three times than what is existing today. This calls for a large number of technologies as well as systems to be designed, developed, tried out, experimented. For the first time we are also experimenting a variety of advanced technologies which are essential elements for the future launch vehicles especially for PSLV and so on. ASLV incorporates vertical assembly and integration procedures which are different from earlier SLV-3. Transportation of the stages is being done by a specially designed trailer in the horizontal position and made vertical at the vertical assembly facility. The vertical assembly facility consists of three segments Mobile Service Tower, MST, the Umbilical Tower and Launch Pedestal, and Mobile Auxiliary Platform. It is totally mobile and it will be moved away just before the launch. satellite reaches the race 30 days before the launching so it has to be prepared here for that we have provided a satellite integration and test facilities near the control center with all clean rooms and other things so that the satellite when it comes they do the deployment and thoroughly check it up and just before moving to the launch pad all the checks will be carried out once they move to the launch pad before we put it on the service tower along with the launch vehicle we have to fill up the propellant the fuel for the satellite to keep it in the orbit that what we call it is sp2 facilities where the propellant will be filled for this facility that also we have provided here the vehicle integration building and one more facility all the ground stations whatever we are used for the slv3 the same thing we are going to use it but regarding the telecommand we have augmented one more telecommand station for the same thing a series of checks are carried out for alignment of the vehicle stages and the satellite. During and after completion of integration, the health parameters of vehicle and the satellite are monitored by the checkout system placed inside the block house. The master control center consists of vehicle and satellite controls separately. 
up to date information from blockhouse and all other ground stations are received at the master control center and the launching of the rocket is authorized from the vehicle control center in case the vehicle deviates from its planned trajectory and goes beyond control the telecommand station can send necessary command to destroy the vehicle the radars track the launch vehicle trajectory and display the same in the master control center this track plays a vital role in providing the telemetry uh, data acquisition for the launch vehicle mission. For the ASLV launch, the ground stations located at Sriharikota, Trivandrum and Karnikubar will acquire the launch vehicle data. These data are processed to some extent in the ground stations and a limited amount of data is transmitted to the control center for monitoring the launch vehicle performance. The telemetry ground station receives vehicle and satellite data during launch phase and the satellite data during orbital phase. The telemetry ground station is also used for satellite tracking and command when satellite is in orbit. Now the vehicle has been assembled and satellite is integrated and ready for launch operations. Here are the planned initial operations of the satellite. Spacecraft is despun using reaction control system. Solar panels are deployed. Satellite is reoriented. Momentum wheel switched on. First orbit raising in dual spin mode. Second orbit raising for its circularization. Earth acquisition. Three axis stabilization. Payload operations.